Welcome to the Embassy of Mike Graham. I'm Mike Graham, and these are the big stories this week that are making my heaven and my hell. Prince of Fools. Well, he's been at it again, hasn't he? After saying he wasn't going to say anything else, he suddenly turned up in London at a court hearing. I'm talking, of course, about Prince Harry. Yes, I'm afraid he has to put himself through all the trauma of going back through all the stories that have been written about him in the Daily Mirror and in the Sunday Mirror and in the People, because he reckoned that all of those stories that were written about him had somehow been obtained illegally. However, he couldn't actually prove it. So he sat there answering a load of questions an awful lot of times saying, I don't know. In fact, he said, I don't know about 18 times on one of the days that he was in court. He was being quizzed by a barrister known as The Beast. Uh, who basically said to him, well, it's all very well you saying that all of these stories were obtained illegally, but you haven't got any proof, have you? And he literally didn't have any proof. The one thing he might be in trouble for, though, uh, is that he mentioned his uh, previous girlfriend, Chelsea Davy, 18 times during the two-day trial uh, that he was sitting on the stand for, and he only mentioned Megan five. So I think Mrs Duchess of Sussex might not be too happy to see him when he gets back. I think he's in hell. Is Holly okay? Holly, are you okay? You're probably feeling like all of us are, unfortunately, a little bit betrayed. We all put our faith in somebody uh, who turned out to be a, a liar. Not just a little liar, a really big liar. He lied to everybody. He lied to you, he lied to me, he lied to us, he lied to them. In fact, you called him they. We're talking, of course, about this morning. Philip Schofield, who is no longer at this morning, uh, who's finally stopped giving, giving interviews. But Holly came back. She came back from holiday and she was looking very well. Well rested. Uh, she threw him under the bus and we move on. Now it's her show. Well done, Holly. Congratulations. You must be in heaven. Yes, sir. No, sir. Apparently, teachers now don't want to be called Miss or Sir. There's a posh private school in London uh, where the headmaster came out at assembly and said to all the pupils, we don't want you to call anyone Miss because it might infantilise them. It might make you think they're children. And we don't want you to call anybody Sir because you might think it's some kind of aristocratic title. Really? I don't think so. I mean, we used to call people Miss and Sir all the time in school because they can't ever remember all their names. It's ridiculous. So he now wants them to call him Mr whatever his name is, Babblecombe, and Mrs. something. That doesn't make any sense, does it? I mean, no wonder the kids are all confused. They don't know who they're calling what. Calling people Miss and Sir surely is part of growing up. And it also might lead you to be a bit more polite when you get out into the big wide world and you can call people Sir without feeling that they're somehow superior to you. It's ridiculous. The wokists have gone mad. It's hell. <laughs> Sounds like a bad idea. Apparently people started wearing headphones in the office. That's if they can be bothered to come to the office because mostly they're working from home. But they've obviously forgotten when they get into the office, they're not at home. Imagine wearing headphones in an office. What would you do that for? All it says is that you don't want to talk to anybody, you don't want to hear from anybody, you don't want to listen to anybody, and you don't want to hear the fire alarm when it goes off either. So I think it's antisocial. I think if you're going to go to work, if you are actually going to make the effort to go to work, for heaven's sake, don't put headphones on. It's rude. And if you do do it, you'll go to hell. Snore off. Apparently sleep experts say if you snore and you disturb uh, your partner, it could be your wife or your husband, apparently the way to cure the problem is to go and sleep in the spare room. They reckon at this big sleep centre in Oxford at the university that this will improve your marriage. My experience of that would be to suggest that that's really, really bad as an idea. Because as soon as you start sleeping separately, that'll be the end of the marriage, not the beginning of it. Once you start sleeping away from your partner, it spells hell. So that was my heaven and hell for this week. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe to the Embassy of Mike Graham. We'll see you next time.